Hello. So that, actually, while we're on the podcast, why did you do that? Because he because he started talking so to me. So why didn't you just say not tonight, mate? Oh, because that would have been that would have been worse. Why? Because he would have gone. Why not tonight, mate? And you could have said, <laughs> "I'm here with my wife, and she's just lost her mum." What are you doing here? Well, that's what he was. We've come for a few laughs. laughs. <laughs> exactly. And, and the laugh is me. You. Guess what? <laughs> I'm her husband. I'm not the comedian. Hello. Daddy, I love you. Mother thanks you. All right, Mr. Demille, I'm ready for my close-up. <laughs> Oh, we're such pros. Hello and welcome to It's a Drama Podcast. I'm Liz. And I'm Brian. And you know what? I just want to be right up front with this now. I want to be, I want to put everything on the table and just say that for the last million, feels like millions of weeks, every time I finish a podcast where we've been talking, a behind the scenes podcast where we've been talking about my mum and grief and how we've been feeling Every time we finish that podcast, I th- I think to myself, that'll probably that'll probably be do now, Liz. That'll probably be it. That will be the last one on, on your grief journey yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. Yep. And every week when we get the stuff out and we sit down, obviously it's not the last one because that's not how grief works. And that's not how we work. No. And to confirm my decision. I want to read out, before we start this show, I want to read out a comment, a message that I got on YouTube, that we got on YouTube from a lady called Amy. Listen to this and you will know why we are recording the podcast that we are about to record. So this is from Amy. She says, Dear Liz and Brian, thank you for every word. You are both such an encouragement to my heart. I am a Kiwi living in Israel with my husband and children, living through this ongoing war navigating parenting through it all and dealing with personal issues, really challenging days. I'm missing New Zealand nature so much and the space and calm that is found there. I've been in tears from almost every video you post recently. Thank you so much for sharing your journey with us, to encourage and to be vulnerable alongside all of us who are also struggling. She goes on to say that her dear mum has also got cancer. She lives in New Zealand and because of the distance, she only manages to see her every few years. Liz and Brian, your words are so much comfort. I'm sending you love from across the oceans. Amy, you are the reason we are here today, not thinking what can we, what else can we do that is a little bit more jolly. You're the reason we're here to share the last 24 hours of this grief Mm. journey because we've just been to Hamilton to see our son. Hamilton is in the middle of New Zealand on the North Island. And we just wanted to share what that experience was like with everyone out there because this is the first big outing we've had. Well, well, I say big outing when you go to, when you live in New Zealand, you go to Hamilton, that's massive. Well, yeah, but it's, you know, it's nearly four hours in the car, isn't it? So it's, it's It's like major. It's a big drive as such. But it's, it's a big drive, whatever it is. What a beautiful comment to get. What a beautiful yeah. message. I can't believe the reach of a podcast when it finds people in places like Israel. Israel couldn't even say Israel. Yeah. Israel. And and beyond it, it's I was I was saying on the podcast the other week. You know, this this is going out to you. Hopefully, the you know people who watch the videos more on the It's a Drama show, of hopefully the sun is coming through the lens and and heading out to you wherever you are. And I couldn't think of places because they're all over the place, aren't they? Yeah. You know, in the back of Canada somewhere, or um, you know, here I'm struggling again with Israel, with, with Israel, Israel, Israel. Yeah, it's one place, and even Saudi Arabia. I, I you know I even see. The charts on Chartable for the podcast of where you go, you know, gives you your peak position. And we were number seven in, in Saudi Arabia. And you're like, what? Mm. How is that possible? But it's, you know, it's not the local people that are, it's the people who are just living or working there, isn't it? And what really, really, really struck me with that comment was, like I say, every time, every time we, we record, I always think, oh, is this is this going to reach anyone? Is this going to help someone? Do you know what? I don't care if there's only one person and it's you, Amy, listening yeah, to this exactly. podcast. Yeah. This is just, oh, it's, it made me feel like everything, the, 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 the vulnerability and the, um, you know, the, the, the bravery that you need to sit down in front of a, a microphone and, and share your personal journey. It's worth every single bit of uncomfortableness and 
Yeah. And that feeling of, oh, this is not really what people want to hear because do you know what? Amy needs to hear this. So yeah. this is for you. <laughs> and, and, you know, and there's, the, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, obviously you can talk about the political situations and wars and things like that in Israel and the Gaza and all those things that are going on around there at the moment and have been forever and a day. Um, but this is about the people. This is just about people. I love people. Yeah. The, the, you know, the people of the world, not so much the politics or the politicians or whatever it is that's running the company, uh, co com same thing, country, company, it's the same thing, isn't it, these days? It just comes down to it's the people that are important. It's that's the it's the love of the common man. Mm. You know, we're all in this together. And you get feelings and, and people that translate into English and talk to us. And we all feel the same. Of course we do. And that's the beauty of of, of this. And that, that when it, when Amy put pen to paper or such or whatever it was, typed it into a YouTube comment, and it hits hard, doesn't it? It really does. It really, you know, it just that coming out and someone just giving you how they're, and thank you, and just how they're feeling and everything else. Yeah. It's just, it's wonderful. So thank you, Amy. I, I, I so we, yeah. It's all we talked about. We didn't even turn the telly on last night, did we? When we, we sat didn't. Down. No, we just, we just talked, talked about, about this it. because it literally had just come in, hadn't it? You know, yeah. and you just think, oh my goodness. And that, like you say, this is what makes us do what we're doing today. So, as much as, and we are, we're going to share with you later on in the show where we've booked, we're booking, we've booked a, a holiday away for a month and we're going to share that with you and talk about that. Yeah. But what we really wanted to talk about was the last 24 hours. We went to Hamilton to see our son, Sonny. He's up there working. Um, He's doing a tour in theatre company, going around schools and educating children through theatre. Yeah, like bullying and AI and the introduction of AI and yeah. stuff like that. It looks a very, a very clever show. It does. Uh, my mum passed on the Friday and Sonny left us on the Sunday. So we had one day together yeah. to talk about, well, we didn't, I, I, it was just, it was just horrible. It was just no one talking, crying. So it felt like. This boy, this boy, this man, this young man, He's our boy. this child, this little baby boy of mine, um, 23, <laughs> nearly. And it just felt like he'd been snatched away and moved into a different world. Mm. And he didn't come through any of the process of grieving or organizing the wake or all the tears at the table, all the mm. conversations, which he's normally so privy to because he lives with us. Well, he's, he's a rock, is Sonny. Oh, it's it, it just, yeah. you know, it, it, it's wonderful to have him by your side when you're going through stuff like this and he hasn't been able to be by it. And we, he talk, we talked about the wake when we met him because literally he flew from Christchurch to um, New Plymouth. Uh, he arrived at five o'clock on the Saturday night and he'd left by 10 o'clock on the Sunday morning. So we, we didn't even get 24 hours. We just no. got 14, 15 hours with him and asleep was most of that, wasn't it? You yeah. Know? And he then he was asking what happened after the wake and everything like that, wasn't it? So that that's, you know. It, so let's just talk about the decision to go and see him first yes, of all. Okay. So like, like if you have followed this show for a while, you will know that we're very, very tight with our kids. You know, Sonny yeah. still lives at home. He's been on the podcast lots of times. This podcast was started with Sonny. You know, Tess has been on the show. We talk about Tess all the time. And so we have, we are a close family. And like I say, he he's doing this tour and he, his birthday is on the 21st of June. Yeah. And he will be in Auckland for that day uh, at that time. And But this, this week he was in Hamilton and we said, look, why don't we just come up to Hamilton? We'll stay overnight. We'll take you out for dinner. Um, we'll go out for breakfast before you start your school thing. And we'll just spend some time with you. And he's like, oh, I'd love that. But I'll be honest, I was absolutely dreading it. I was dreading it because I knew I had to step into his world, mm -hmm. which is drama and schools and happiness and acting and adventure because he's going around the whole of New Zealand. And and I was scared that I was going to bring my lump of grief and yeah. sadness to his beautiful light world. That's, that's hand on heart. That's how I felt. Right. And I was really nervous about going. I know you You actually said you didn't want to go. I didn't. Because not too much didn't want to go, but it was an excuse just to look after the dog. Yeah, I didn't want to you, go. You just go on your own. Yeah. And yeah. that's why, because I just thought the last thing he needs is me turning up bawling yeah. or me turning up not able to hold a conversation that didn't include my mum in it. And I just, mm. I, 
I suppose it's that protective thing of a mother. You just don't want it. You don't want no. to take, you know, when you can see your child is struggling anyway to ha do this new part mm. of life. I mean, it's a massive thing to turn up at a school every day yeah. and entertain. Mm -hmm. You know, it's he's, he's not done it before. He's doing a fantastic no, job of it. No, he's done a lot of acting before, but he's never done this as a job. No. Uh, and it's the responsibility of getting to the place on time, set up, and, you know, different people every day. Yeah. Yeah. Were you looking forward to going? Yes, I was. And there was a part of me when you said, um, you just go. And I thought, yep, I'll get the pool, the, the pool cue out of the garage. I bet you did. And we'll just go and find an Irish bar and play some pool. <laughs> I thought you didn't. I, I, I Can wondered. I leave now? <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, Fry, I wondered when I said that to you. Because I was crying. I was like, why don't you just go and just leave me? And I thought... Okay. Yeah, you didn't even say, no, no, Liz. You went, oh, is that what you want, darling? Yeah. I'll, I'll only be 24, <laughs> 20, actually 36 hours. <laughs> Not just the 24. Did you yeah. really just want to go on your own? Um, for that side that you said about, if you weren't feeling 100%, I just know he would have felt, he would have just felt like he wasn't there for you, I suppose, if you'd started crying all the time or stuff like that. So... Yeah, it, you know, I didn't really think about it, Liz. It was just... We're going. I, I, no, it was just... It wasn't so much we're going. It's like we are going because we've told him we're going. That's... Yeah, what it, it is. It is. We're, we're going. But I would not have gone, well, I'm not going if you're not going. I would have gone, I'm still going to see him because we've told him we're going. So we drove up there. It's about three and a half hours drive. We drove from New Plymouth to Hamilton yeah. Left the dog with a friend. We went to New Plymouth. Uh, we went. We drove up to Hamilton, and um, to be honest, it just felt like oh, I just wanted to like cl collapse in his arms and go, "Oh, Sonny, yeah. I've missed you so much." But I was trying to keep this energy up of like, "Wow, tell us all about what you're doing then," and you know, "What what have you been up to?" And he did, didn't he? We went to a bar. We yeah, got a we cocktail. Did. We sat, sat outside. outside. Yeah, it was really lovely. Got the um, heater out for us, didn't we? Yeah. And he was telling us all about what he was doing. And in my mind, I was just thinking, keep focus, Liz. Keep focus. Mm. Just listen to what he's saying. Do you know what? I just wanted to get his face. I just wanted to hug mm. him so much and get his face and go, oh, Sonny, I've missed you so much. I but I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to make him upset mm -hmm. and him think that, oh, God, you know, she needs me. I need to go home to her. Whatever, you know. That's that. That was that was how I felt. Yeah. Sorry. The cats. It's raining outside, and the cats going mm -hmm. <laughs> down down the window. I was thinking, what's that noise? Which is putting the paws up on the window. I wanted to get in. Oh, let her in. No, I can't get up. Go on. Uh, no, because it's just be too. It's too hard. I mean, she'll she'll just end up meowing. You might not know this actually, because if you watch this video on YouTube, and if you watch any of our videos on YouTube now, you mm. will know that we've got two cats back. I know. Mm. so yeah that's a whole different story so what, <laughs> what, what shall i say it I, you can tell the story yeah, yeah i can yeah. because when it was so, kind of a very weird wasn't it? <laughs> it was a bit weird seven years ago when we traveled the world for a year we had two cats and a dog a dog that we've still got and we had these two cats called sid and nancy and we'd had them for a year and we went traveling the world and my mum said don't worry about the cats. Just leave them with me. Oh, we had three cats. We, we had, had Pandora cats, as yeah. well. Pandora's not with us anymore. Yeah. And she said, don't worry about the cats. Just bring them over to me. Yeah. If you've read my book, Travel Bog Diaries, I mentioned this in the book. Um, I was just so relieved that my mum said that she would have the animals. Anyway, the animals went over to mum. We went traveling the world for a year. When we came back from traveling, mum said, you can have the dog and Pandora back, but can I keep Sid and Nancy, the two cats? Because I've yeah. just fallen in love with them. I love them. Mm -hmm. And that was like six years ago. And so we were said, okay, because she was a huge cat lover. So we mm. said, yeah, okay, you just have the cats. Um, so she did for six years. And we lost Pandora a couple of years ago. We talked about that on the podcast. So now we just had one dog, which we still got. However, after my mum passed, I literally... <laughs> The day after. Why are you why are you no, doing that because phase? It was just like, it's awkward, isn't yeah, it? It is yeah, awkward. It is. It's, all, it's kind of awkward. It's, but it's a little it's bit awkward, but it's true. It is, so I'm it? just yeah. going to say it. Mm. The day after, um, my mum's uh, husband came round and said, "Look, 
will you have the cats back? It's a madhouse around It's here. a madhouse. I can't yeah. cope. Fair enough. Absolutely fair enough. So the cats have now come back to us mm. six years later. <laughs> We've got these two cats. So if you hear us talking about the cats or you see them on a video, should you be yeah. watching on YouTube, that's what happened. They've come back after six years. Sid and Nancy are back. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I reckon my mum's up there. She's up there saying, yeah. what, how are you, what are you doing with those cats? <laughs> They're my cats. <laughs> Never mind, you can't cope. Take them back. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so we've got the cats, so that's that. Go on, what were you saying? You're not going to stand up and let the cat in? No, I'm not going to let the cat in, no. <laughs> <laughs> but what were we up to? I don't what did <laughs> Sid and Nancy just <laughs> taken over the show? Just going yeah. to Hamilton. We yeah. had such a good time, didn't we? Yes, we did, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, so we were going back to what we were talking about um, at the bar, and... Sonny kept looking at us both and going, tell me a bit about you, didn't I he? I know, do you know And what? that's that, you know, because we were like wanting to know what, he, it's like, I just seem to be the one that's just telling all the stuff. I said, yeah, but you're doing the interesting stuff. And he said, yeah, but I'd like to know what you're up to. How are you feeling? What are you doing? Do you know what I thought when he said that? What? Do you know, honest to God truth, what I thought? What? I thought he was looking at us. I saw him. I caught, I caught him looking at us, right? <laughs> and he, he said, so tell me about you two. And I honestly thought he was thinking, you know, when you you implant someone else's thoughts in their brain. Yeah. I thought that he was thinking, God, these two look old and tired and rough. I know you gave me a shifty glance. And I'm I like, did, what? because I thought, what? Well, why is yeah. he looking at us like that? You know, like sometimes when you look at someone and you're taken aback, he hasn't seen us for seven, eight weeks, Bri. And yeah. I'm wondering if he saw us and he thought, oh my God. Yeah. And then we had that photo taken, you know, when we were in the Chinese restaurant and I said to you, take the yeah. photo of me and Sonny. Yeah. And you took, that, you took that photo, and when you showed me on your phone, I just looked like this little wizened old lady with my head on his shoulder. <laughs> and he, it's nice. Well, it's not funny. It's not funny. I don't even know A why I'm laughing. wizened old lady. I did. I looked to myself. What sort of I, age are we talking about here, Liz? I look about 110. <laughs> Doing all right, then. Oh, Bri, I looked to myself. I thought, who's that? Yeah. Why am I so small for a start? Why have I got my head on his shoulder like a little old lady would do? What's going on? <laughs> you could have to show that photograph now. <laughs> I'll put it on Someone the website. You me. can go and look. <laughs> do you know what this is? Do you know what this is? I don't know. It's, what is it? it's grief-induced insecurity. It's just everything. This is what I've self-diagnosed myself. What are you doing that face this for? Is where did these people come up with these names? What people? You're talking to your wife. It's I know me. You, but where did you come up with it? I'm telling you now. Well, how can you diagnose yourself? I with just that? am. I'm allowed because right. I think this is what it is. No, but I, this is. I talked to Self myself. Self-induced. What? What did you say? It was? What did I say? It was? I don't know. It's, it's just. Like, I've forgotten. That's the other thing. So, I don't know. If there's a label big enough no, for that name. Self. It. What did I say? It was self-induced trans something confidence. Conf what? I don't know. Brian. Insecurity. Oh, insecurity. Yeah. Self-induced insecurity. Is that what you said? Did it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Should we rewind the tape? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's just, it's it's a feeling, you're telling yourself you're insecure. I think that's what I mean when I say self-induced. Maybe self-induced, self-induced probably isn't the right word. Okay. What it is, it's rather than me saying to myself, you're doing great, Liz. Yeah. I'm telling myself, you're looking, you're not, you're not doing well here, are you? You can't remember that woman's name when you're talking to Sonny. You're just about holding it together, Liz. Yeah. Snap. Oh, look at that picture. God, you look rough. You look about 110. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's not healthy, but I'm telling the truth. This is what I'm going through. This, okay. This is, this is what. But do you feel better with having a label or? Oh, don't start. No, I'm not. Don't yeah, but I just start. want to know because do you know what? I think when I hear people talking about this and. Oh, it's almost like they get relief go, oh, that's it then, isn't it? Yeah. And in, instead of just going, I guess, what well, it's just part of life. This is it, which it's just a stage. and um, It's part of life. I don't need a label for that part of my life and go, oh, back in 2024, I was self-induced. What was it called again? Insecurity. You're I was a self-induced insecure person. I'll tell you what. But it's just life. You're going to get a clobber in a minute, bro. I hope so. You're going to get a clobber. <laughs> you, you're that small, because... it wouldn't even hurt. <laughs> <laughs> just be like, oh. <laughs> You'll be able to get over the table or reach that far. <laughs> tell the truth. Tell the truth, Bri. Tell the truth. I don't mind if whatever the answer is. <laughs> okay, yes. Tell the truth. 
when you look at me, do you see an old wizened person yes. who is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bri. No, but. Do you know what? This is really positive because I know, it, it, it's, I'm seeing the, go on, I'm seeing the funny side. I'm a self-induced, insecure person with a really good sense of humor. No. <laughs> but you know what? I was listening to someone the other day talking about, um, you know, getting therapy and going to see a counsellor and stuff like that. You're not supposed to say stuff like that. Remember what we just said? Yeah, at the we did say. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just thinking of another word uh, for a counsellor. I didn't want to say physiotherapist. Uh, not physiotherapist. <laughs> got a sore shoulder good to see you about my mind go on you were listening to someone about a counselling um, and therapy yes and um it's the first time in his life that he'd he'd, he'd, he'd done it like you know and done what that's going to um just talking about problems that okay. he's, he's got you know opening up and finding something from a long time ago or whatever it was and actually talking about it for a change and he said he found it really difficult at first and then He's been very busy, so he's t- he took a break for a month or so, but he's going back next week. And he just said, I'm so looking forward to it. What, the therapy? Yeah, the therapy. Of course. Why the, wouldn't you yeah, be? Yeah, exactly. Why wouldn't you be? I know. Uh, and and it related me to, or not related, reminded me about why sometimes we do a podcast. Not what, what Amy said before, but it's like a little therapy session. It there is. a therapy session. It is. It moved across from the microphone, a therapy session. It's also like um, like this one is sort of going in the direction of a husband and wife. What are those ones that you go to with your husband and wife for problems? Yeah. but Marriage um, counselling. Yeah. but And again, he'd been to that as well. Not marriage counselling, but couples therapy. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Talking like this... I, I, we've said this Everybody loads should of times. I know they? we've said you know? it loads of times. Especially with the, uh, not as much for a podcast. Just do it. And of know? course, everyone must. Well, I'm saying I know that's really presumptuous of me. Not everyone gets to talk to their partner because you hear from people who say, "My husband just doesn't want to talk to me," or "My yeah. wife doesn't want to talk to me," and I kind of get that because that goes back to what I was just saying about Sunny. Sometimes you hold back because you don't want to upset that person or you don't want to start an argument or you don't want the conflict. Yeah, or... that's it. You don't know where it's going to go. No, you don't. And that's what's up why a lot of people won't talk because last time we talked, we had an argument at I the know. end of it because you were trying to ask me about something and that's why you wanted to talk to me. Okay, yeah, I understand that side of things. Mm. But this is just about general. Start off with a, start off with a subject and see where it takes you. Yeah. And that's what we've we've done here. And all of a sudden, we're talking about something completely different to what the last 24 hours was. But it's actually interlinked with the last 24 hours. By the way, going back to your um, accusation of do you feel better? And now you've got a Liz, label. Now you've got a label. Mm-hmm. Do you know what? I, I'm, not, I'm not a label-y person. I know you're not. But I understand why people, do you, when you say do you feel better, actually, the honest truth is, yes, I do. Because mm-hmm. now I can just move on from that and I don't have to worry about it because it's just, oh, this is just self-induced self-confidence issues, Liz, or whatever it was I said. Mm-hmm. Um, but you will come out of that. It's not, this isn't, this. I look at it the other way from you. I don't look at it like, oh, you're giving yourself a label, so you're going to be stuck with that label. I look at it like you're giving a name so you can address it and move on from it. That's the way I look at it. Yes. But you've, I can understand wanting to associate with something. Oh, that's a great name for that. You know, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yes, I do. Yeah, I do know what you're saying. And what you're saying is you don't want this to define the rest of your life. That That's it for me now. I'm, I'm, this is it. And I, I, I like the fact that you said I want to move on from it. But it's almost like if you don't just, hey, what, you, what you're struggling with at the moment is this. It's not a label. And you don't need to go, oh, yeah. It, it's just the, a part of the process. It's a part of this. It's just uh, all I'm trying to get around to is, is like some people are happy with it and want and don't want to move on from it because that's where they're happy. As in, not so much happy, but it becomes the norm. I disagree. I don't think it's that it becomes the norm. Right. I think it just it just wordalizes it. You know, it just it yeah. just gives it a name that you can think, okay. If that's all it is, then that's fine. As long, it's like saying, someone saying, why do I keep sniffing? Why, is my, why have I just got constant snot running down my nose? What's wrong with me? Yeah. You've just got a cold. Oh, right. It's, it's fine. Yeah, it, it'll yeah. go. 
don't worry, just take this paracetamol and take this decongestion or yeah, it, but it's it'll go on thing. its yeah, own. But it's, like, it's like breaking an arm. Yeah, you've broken an arm. That's the name yeah. for what you've done. You've broken your arm. And you know, it should repair. And yeah. you, then you will move on. And I don't know if I said this or not. You'd have to rewind the tape like you just said. I don't know if I said, oh, I have self-diagnosed, self-confident issues. Or did I say, this is just self whatever i said yes it might you might what i've done uh, we'd have to look, look yeah well, i don't want to look back because it's kind of interesting because it sparked a conversation yeah it? it does yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and 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 yeah and i i i that's that's in my defense that's why i said that because it is it's just something that now it's like saying oh it's grief mm -hmm. well that's fine if it's grief i know what i know i know about grief because i can read about grief and this is what I can expect from it. Not that you can expect anything from grief because it's all different. But, you know, it's like it's giving something a name sometimes just makes it more uh, real and makes yeah. it more you can. It's just something you can you you you, you, uh, you can just experience and then you will come out of, you know, you will move through it. Yeah. Rather than, oh, my God, what is it? I don't know. I don't know. What, oh, no, I don't know. What I'm feeling like, oh, I, oh, it's just this. Yeah. Okay. It's I, just that that's fine. Yeah. Let's move on. Anyway, so No, cuz I think that's a, that, that's a, uh, this if someone just turned around to you, oh, you're just in that stage at the moment where it's actually this and you you know you're struggling with confidence and you're struggling with that. So, you know, that's totally understandable. But when they actually say it's this this and this or it's this three words, you know, like, oh, okay. It, it do you know what I'm trying you can see what I'm trying to say. I know what you're trying to say and, and what I'm trying to say. It's just like it's that you've got that at the moment. Mm. you know and it's just i don't know I maybe just we'll think just it's cut it out the podcast and then no, we just can no, no, just no. cut this massive massive conversation that isn't no, going because anywhere that's, that's, no it is it has gone somewhere that's it but because you actually said i don't want this to you know determine what i'm going to be i will know i will come through this that, which is good we said goodbye to sunny we had breath yeah you have got a squeaky chair it keeps it touching the table it's not a squeaky chair though is it it's just a chair that's no, making a no, noise don't no. define it by squeakiness yeah <laughs> I'm going to get a label, squeaky table. <laughs> we are the squeaky the podcasters. <laughs> squeaky, squeaky cat. clean. <laughs> yeah, squeaky cat. Oh, she's just sitting there in the rain. Go and let her in I'm then. I'm not going to let her in. No. Do you know what? Anyone watching this? She's um, got right, cat No, she's right, got a cat no. flap. Oh, here we go. Anyway, welcome to the It's a Drama podcast. And here comes the cat. That won't come in now. But you can hear her. Ah, see, she's running away. <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing. She's sitting by the door again now. Oh, it. cats are so oh, contrary. I know they are. Now I know why I gave her away for six years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I once said Nancy. Yeah, you can. What I was saying is, we said goodbye to Sunny, and am I in the same place that I was before? We, we said goodbye to Sunny, and and then it was almost like when we said goodbye, it was almost like oh, mixed emotions. It was mixed emotions. It was a feeling of oh, thank God, I got through it. Yeah, and. Oh no! I just want him to come home. I just want him to be there. But I know that we, you wanted to just talk about the phone call with the doctor in the car because I think that took you by surprise, didn't it? Yeah, uh, but this this goes back to um, it's how much energy you've got, and I I could see because this we're talking about the next day now, aren't we? So we've been, yeah. we arrived at Hamilton around about three thirty, four o'clock. Went out for the night. Went to went home about eleven o'clock, didn't we? We went to the, the comedy store and stuff like that, and went for something to eat. And then we met Sunny for breakfast in the morning. Um, and then we'd spent the rest of the day from ten o'clock on um, in, in this lovely little shopping mall type place, wasn't it? Like, mm -hmm. You know. And we 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 wanted to go to the the gardens, but then it started to get a bit cloudy and rainy, didn't it? So we said, "Oh, let's just let's just head back." And I'd actually I'd ordered my testosterone from um, the doctor uh, a pre prescription, and I know Liz had ordered her HRT at the same time. And I said, "Oh, it's funny that Compound Labs in Auckland, because you can only get it from one place in in New Zealand. They haven't contacted you to say, you know, because they've contacted me. They sent me a text message. Why? Why was that? And anyway, you you called the doctor, and that's what we wanted to talk about, wasn't it? It was just a very simple call with the doctor at the reception. The, at the reception at the doctors. Yeah, do you know what I? I do want to talk about the the call with the doctors at the reception. But before yeah. I want before I talk about that do doctor at the reception, this this the the point of this sharing this with you is to show you if you are going through similar things um, or have been through similar things and you want to feel like oh it was just normal. 
to show you the difference between going out with your son and going for a meal and we went to the comedy club and I'm all there and I'm all dressed up and, you know, just there I am doing yeah. the thing and then snap, literally just snap one second yeah. and I'm in just complete and utter floods of tears. Yeah. I want to talk about the doctor thing <clears throat> in just a minute. Just hold that okay. thought for a minute. But what I, the other thing I want to talk about is, and I don't want to say too much, but I won't say this on YouTube anyway, because we're, we've got a plan to make a video on YouTube um, for our show, for our It's a Drama show, not the, for the podcast, but for the show. But it involves the comedy club, does it? it well, it just involves our trip to Hamilton. Right. But I won't okay. I won't talk about... Go into depth with that. I won't yeah. go into depth with it. But I'll tell you what, you know, you started heckling the... Yeah. I didn't start well, heckling. We, actually, he, he you had did. a go at me. We, we went to the comedy store. It was an open mic. We were sitting two rows from the front, which was hideous. Um, it was busy. There's only three rows in the in the thing. I know. We're in the middle <laughs> row. <laughs> all, the, all the other ones were taken. And the last guy that came on was English. And he was flipping cocky, wasn't he, Brian? He was cocky. He was very good. He was but very he was, good, he but cocky. he scared me because he was cocky. The yeah. other ones, they were gentle. They were Kiwi. Yeah. And they were gentle. But this yeah. guy, as soon as I heard his English accent, I thought, oh, God. From Manchester. La, yeah, la, la. exactly. Yep. He's going to be on the ball, this one. And he was. Yep. And he picked on you, and you started heckling him back, telling him yeah. that he didn't have a decent hairline. Well, he said to me, what type of haircut have you got? Because he could only see, obviously, it was a bit bright lights, and my head was a little bit flat flat at the top, you know, because I saw it was combed to the side or whatever it was. <laughs> and it, it's like, and he's almost he's got receding and very short hair, and I, I might immediately ask him back to him, well, at least I've got a hairline, mate. <gasps> Oh, I hated and, it. Yeah, but that was, he was trying it. to roast me. It was called a roasting, wasn't it? Like, you know, it was I just know. like, oh. When you and him, because he literally, he took his glasses off and he went, yeah. right, do you want to go for it, do you, mate? Mm -hmm. And he went, what sort of coat, what's, what crap coat is that that you've got on? Yeah. And I could Why you only buy half a coat? Yeah, because he had, you, you had body your warmer. body warm. Because it's New Zealand, mate. It is temperate. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, honestly, I was just... <clears throat> My throat started, like it is now, just thinking about it. My throat started clamping up. Yeah. I started sweating. I just, I wanted the room to just swallow me. I just wanted to run away. Yeah. I just wanted to get up and run away. So much so that I did. said to him, <laughs> I said to him, can you please pick on someone else? I mean, what wife says that to the yeah. comedian? Because he said to you, I feel sorry for you being married, married to him for the last Yeah, and I just years. thought, I don't want to do this. Yeah. I'm, there's, I don't, why did we even go to a comedy club? <clears throat> to laugh. Know. To have a laugh. To laugh. Yeah, but to I tell out. you what, I swear to God, now I'm saying this on this microphone now, and I'm saying it on this camera, yeah. and Amy... You want to you, go to another one tonight no, listen with me. No, listen to me, listen to me, Brian Deacle. Listen <laughs> yeah, to I'm me, listen to you, Elizabeth right? Deacle. Yeah, listen to me. Mm -hmm. I am never... Ever, ever, as long yeah. as I live, ever going to go to a comedy club with you again, Sonny Brian? And see if he I'm not. Wants to go. I'm not going to go with you. Everything. I'm not ever going to go with you ever okay, again. Ever again? No, because every single time we go to a comedy club, I say to you, "Don't heckle, please, okay. don't heckle." <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm grieving, and I'm there's you heckling. starting heckling with that flipping cocky Manchester comedian, la la la, that was going to hammer us, and he did. Yeah. I just he didn't to, hammer us. He did. No, he, didn't. he did, Brian. He was, it was trying really to get something. Horrible. He was trying, yeah, but he was just trying to get some. He was trying to get a bit of interaction, funny wise, and, he, and it's just. But he didn't know our situation. No, he didn't. And I just think didn't, didn't read that label. No. So well, actually, while we're on the podcast, why did mm. you do that? Because he because he started talking so to me. So why didn't you just say not tonight, mate? Oh, because that would have been that would have been worse. Why? Because he would have gone. Why not tonight, mate? And you could have said, <laughs> "I'm here with my wife, and she's just lost her mum." What are you doing here? Well, that's what he was, we've come for a few laughs. laughs. <laughs> exactly. And, okay. and the laugh We're isn't me. You. Guess what? <laughs> I'm her husband. I'm not the comedian. Mm. So anyway, capiche? That's all I've got to say. So you don't like it, Bray? I, it wasn't that. I was just, I was trying to get to have a bit of banter with him, but he just didn't want to go down that route. He was just trying to... Oh, anyway. I think I was anyway, going to be Anyway, yeah. I, think, I, I want to say, in, in normal circumstances, I would have been fine. Yeah. But in normal... I don't think you would. I wouldn't. You, you wouldn't. I hate it. I remember years ago, at Christmas once, we went to the comedy club and it was the same thing, wasn't it? Well, yeah. look, I love you. Steve I love you, Brian. I really love you. And you have just been amazing on this, supporting <laughs> me on my grief journey. But... Honestly, not that time. You just need to <laughs> for that need five to minutes of our life. Pull back when you go into a comedy store. Yeah, I try to, but I'll sit on the front row next time, just by myself. 
anyway, so that was the story of the uh, of the comedy store, and it was just it was it was one of those moments where I just thought I do not want to be here. <sighs> yeah, but yeah, going back to the doctors, we went. We were, so we were in the car driving home, and I phoned her up, and she was so lovely. She was English, and she was just. She went, hello, this is Sue speaking. Oh, no, what was her name? Lynn. Lynn. I said that before, Lynn. Yeah, Lynn speaking. And I've got this thing that when I'm on the phone to someone or when I meet them in person and they give me their name, Mm -hmm. I can remember it for, I'll always remember it. You do. A face or a name, you've been amazing at doing that, haven't you? For every day. I have. And I've always, so when I speak to someone on the phone and they say, good morning, this health space is Lynn speaking. And I always say, oh, hi, Lynn. And then I tell them my problem. And then when I'm going, when I'm leaving the phone conversation, I always say, thanks so much, Lynn. You've been great. Yeah. Speak to you soon. And that's it. And she phoned, I phoned her up and she said, hello, this is Lynn speaking. So I said, oh, I haven't had my, you know, I can't, I haven't got my HRT, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I'll pick up that from there. Had the conversation. But in my mind, I was thinking, her name's Lynn. Her name's Lynn. Her name's Lynn. Her name's Lynn. Remember yeah. that her name is Lynn. Yeah. Because you're going to say goodbye in a minute, Liz. Got to the end of the conversation. Called her Sue. Yeah. It's funny now, but it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't then. And I put the phone down. I just burst out crying. Yeah, because I said to you, why did you just call her Sue? And she, she, you, I didn't. I said, see you soon. I yeah. said, no, you said, see you, Sue. But anyway, and yeah. that's what kind of set it and off. And it did. Yeah. It set it off. Yeah. It did set it off. And um, yeah, it's just one of those examples, and then isn't you, it? Yeah, because you just went, you just bumbled, bumbled, not bumbled, but you just, the way you were talking was just like, I'm fed up of this. I'm fed up of this. I just can't do this. I can't do that. I can't remember that. I can't remember faces. I'm just fed up of it all. Mm. And, you, and then you just started crying, didn't you? Yeah. 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 And uh, It's understandable. I But... I could see even when you were on the phone, your body language changed, everything changed. You just wanted to almost throw the phone out the window and, and like, just I'll forget about it. Don't, you know, but. It's so weird, this. It's so, so weird. Uh, th- this, again, and I know I've said this before on the podcast, but what strikes me is this whole not knowing from one minute to the next how you're going to be like now Mm -hmm. if someone walked in now and heard me and you having this conversation they think that's a nice perky couple yeah they're doing all right yeah they're doing okay yeah Yeah. oh she's she's doing really good and that's what it feels like some days i was thinking about this the other day and i thought it's like being grief is like being in a sandstorm and every grain of sand is like massive sadness and hurt and pain and sometimes you're just to the side of that sandstorm and you only get hit by maybe one grain every mm. every day, you know, on a day or maybe one or two. And then sometimes it the wind changes and it's like, Whoa, you know, and it's mm. just, oh my God, where did that come from? Where did that come from? And I know we're laughing about the comedy store and things like that, but it was, it was like one minute I'm sitting there, la ha ha, looking, laughing, 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 having a glass of wine with Sonny. Mm. Oh, isn't this fun? Next minute. Complete panic attack. Yeah, want like to be out of there. Tornado comes it along was. full of sand and yeah. hits you, doesn't it? Yeah, it really yeah. was. And it's just, again, it's one of those things that you just want to just mention because it's completely and utterly normal. Yeah, it is. It's it's part of the process, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, when I came home that night, mm. and this is again something that I'm going to tell you because it, it's a, it is a personal thing, but I do want to tell you, and it's hard for me to tell you now because I'm not in that. St- state of mind and I'm not all in myself and upset and very you know emotional but I'm going to tell you anyway but I came home and I was unpacking the case Mm. and we were fine I'll tell you what though I did come in when we walked in I just thought I've never been so glad to be home I kept saying that to you didn't I Bri yeah and I think that comes down to again is like you go away for one night you don't sleep that well do you you know it's a completely new place or whatever it is you know you never you never sleep brilliantly, do you? It wasn't even that. And this is what I'm worried about, about our month away that we're going to talk about in a minute. Yeah. It wasn't even that. It wasn't even that I didn't sleep properly. I don't yeah. feel like I've slept properly for seven weeks, eight weeks. Yeah. It wasn't even that. It was more everything here I know. I know I know what my, my, my bed feels like. I know where the bathroom is. I know what I'm mm. going to have for my dinner. I know what the couch is there. I just light the fire. I can just sit down. I know that the cat is here and the dog's here. And, you know, and everything is just calm and everything is just homely and familiar 
Mm. And I think that's what is hard when you're going through this is to put yourself out of your comfort zone and everything that just feels so safe and lovely and warm and fluffy and safe. Mm. I just keep saying that word safe because that's how it feels. To then suddenly open the doors and someone push you out and go, go on, out you go. Look, go up to Hamilton mm. there then. Go to the comedy store and go to that restaurant. It just felt like a massive, massive task, exhausting task. And when I got home, it was just like, oh, thank God. Oh, phew, I'm not going there again. And then I remembered that we're going away in in a month's time. We're going to be yeah. leaving and going away for a month. Yeah. But, I'm nervous. So I know you're nervous about that, but, you know, um, are you glad you went? To Hamilton? Mm -hmm. To see Sunny, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I really, in fact, yes, I am glad I went. Yeah. I am glad I went, Bri, it was because big, it, it was, was good fun. Yeah, and it was a big effort. I can see it was a big effort for you because you were, you know, you normally, you know, we'd, we'll have something to um, eat and then we'll sit down and maybe watch something, you know, just to change your mind and, you know, not so much change your mind, just relax, basically. Yeah. Um, but we just, I don't know, by 10 o'clock you were sort of, that's it. Um, ready to go to bed, you could just see you were, you know, because you sort of we were just laying on the couch together, weren't we? And mm. it was just like, right, you better go to, to bed now. But normally, you'd be like an hour later before you went to bed, mm. so you could, I could see how tired you were. And then you were in bed for apart from getting up for mags in the middle of the night, which is the dog. Um, it was what a good 10 hours sleep, mm. which that's what you need at the moment. I think that's what it is, yeah. you know, it really yeah. is. Because when, when Tess was here the last weekend, uh, uh, last weekend just gone, you didn't get much sleep, did you? You mm. know, probably six hours, seven hours a night. Not enough, really, I don't think. So I just want to talk to you about, and then we will finish this conversation up, but just about coming home from Hamilton. I came in, everything was, I was just like, oh, thank God, you know, just that relief. Um, and it was almost like you could just, you know, when you take your bra, well, you don't, but when you take your bra off and you just think, oh, Oh, thank God. I'm home. Yeah, I'm home. And it just is, it, that's what it felt like walking through the door. And if you're a woman, you wore a bra, you'd know what that felt like. It's just, there's no better feeling than taking your bra off. I went into the, the bedroom. I started unpacking my bag and I took out a dressing gown that I'd taken with me. Mm. And I went into the bathroom and hung the dressing gown. I was just like, la, 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 you know, just I'm home now. Everything's fine. Oh, I hung the dressing gown on the back of the door in the bathroom and I suddenly got a whiff of the the body lotion that I was wearing when I was nursing mum mm -hmm. at the nursing home. Yep. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden that sandstorm just went boom, like, you know, just all over me, just it completely in my face. The dressing gown was hanging up on the back of the door and I went like this. I just held onto the dressing gown and I put my face in the dressing gown and just started to sob and do you remember what i told you last week if if about holding yourself about yeah. putting your arms around yourself it's a, it was it amy porterfield or someone like that that said it or someone like that um no it was um it was uh robbins mel robbins had mel said robbins, it right. yep. and in case you didn't hear last week's podcast i was saying about things that helped grief and one of the things that help me personally is to wrap my arms around myself like a child and and hold myself mm. for like a few minutes and comfort myself like I would comfort a, my own child, like yeah. I would comfort a, a, a crying child. Like hugging yourself. Hugging yourself, yeah. yeah. I'd never heard of this before. I've never done it before. But since this, I've started doing it and I will never not, not, not do it again. Yeah. And I recommend it for anyone to do it. It's fabulous. But I went one step further with this. Because I could smell the body lotion on my on my dressing gown, dressing gown. Yeah. I slipped my arms through the dressing gown. Yeah. Um, and I, 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 if you do, I was all I was thinking is, please don't come in, Brian, because I'm going to smack my nose on the back of the bathroom door. But I was, I was stood with my head on the back of the bathroom door, with my arms in the dressing gown, holding myself. Yeah. Um, so I could smell the smell that was related to that time. And I could just feel mum. I could mm. just feel her. And I could just, I normally would say to myself, I've got you. Mm. I've got you. But the words that were coming to me was, she's got you. Yeah. She's got you, Liz. She's got mm. you. And I just felt like it was my mum hugging me. Yeah. I, 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 it was the most bizarre thing. And I came out and told you. 
And all of a sudden, what went through my head when I was holding myself and was saying to myself, she's got you, was two things. And I told you this, mm. two things. She's got you, as in yep. she's got your back. Yep. She's got you, as in she's got you. Yep. And something really profound went through my mind, and it was this. It was, I am so consumed with what I haven't got anymore because my mum isn't here. I haven't got her to talk to. I haven't got her to have a glass of wine with. I haven't got her to peck me on the cheek. I haven't got her to say, you look nice, Liz. I haven't got her to say, oh, I heard your latest podcast. I love that. I haven't got her. I haven't got her. I haven't got her. But guess what? She hasn't got me anymore. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it hit me that she would think, I've got her. Same as I thought, I've got her. Mm. And she would look to me and I could hear her voice saying, you inspired me, Liz. You made me happy. You made my day when you'd have a glass of wine with me. I'd look forward to your podcast, Liz, because they made me laugh. Mm. She had me, by yeah. as much as I had her. And now yeah. she's saying to me, it felt like she was saying to me, as I stood and held myself, it was like her saying to me, I still need you, Liz. Mm. I still need you to be strong. I still need you to do these things for me, you know, because I'm still here and I need you to still be there for me. Yeah. Oh, it was the most profound thing. Yeah. Absolutely profound. So much so that I came out and told you and I actually went and bought the URL. Actually. Yeah, you did. She's got you because I just thought I've got to I've got to do something with this because yeah. it it was it was like this beautiful circle of me and Tessa and mum and she's got you as in I've got you Brian yeah, you know and yeah. Sonny's got she's got she's got you yeah. you know she's got you it's like infinite isn't it we it talk, is. we've talked about it. it's like you know Tessa she's got you you've got Tessa she's yeah. you know and, and vice versa yeah. and, you know it's just like it goes on doesn't it you know I really really hope that what I've just said is as clear to you as it is to me in my mind. It was just that she's got you. She's got you. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. it was just so special. And it made me, it made my mind shift to that. You've got to carry on, Liz. You've got to carry on for her, mm -hmm. for Tessa. Yeah, and you know, for everybody else for, out there as well. For Amy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For, yeah. for you listening to this. Yeah. Because... You're listening to this and she's got you, as in I, I'm here yeah. for you. Yeah, a Amy's, you know, Amy's got you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And vice versa. <laughs> and I've got Amy. Yeah. Because without Amy, I wouldn't be doing this podcast. Yeah. It's beautiful. It yeah. is so beautiful. And it was the end of the, four, the last 24 hours that we've been through. Yeah. Going to Hamilton, that's how it ended. Yeah. Me with my arms stuffed in a dressing gown, smelling my mum's smell that reminded me of her with these words, she's got you coming through. And mm -hmm. it was so, so bloody powerful. It was so powerful. And I just had to share that. Yeah. No, it's gorgeous. Yeah. So thank you for listening. So, yeah. I'm shaking now. I'm actually shaking. No, you'll be after that. that because that's, that's the passion it's... that you had. Well, because you know we, we sat in the hot tub afterwards and talked about this, didn't we? Like you know, from that, just that literally just happening to you. Yeah. You know? So before we go, we promised to share with you, um, and this is a whole different podcast which we are going to talk about next week. But it's we promised to share with you where we've booked to go away for a month. Mm -hmm. We're going for the whole of August, aren't we, Brian? Yes, we are. Yep. Where are we going by? We're going back to Chiang Mai in Thailand. We are. Yep. Because we need a bit of rest and, um, what's it called? Respite and Rex uh, R&R, which is relaxation a lot. Um, you know, we just need to just go back somewhere we know. And, you know, you need some dental work where you broke a tooth. Um, and so it's like, that paid for the flights, really, just just to have it done over there. And so it's a great thing to write. You need to get that done. We need a break. But that's what we, you know, we were going to actually have that now. And I think with what happened in Hamilton, it was probably a good idea we didn't go this I month. am so glad we didn't. And we, 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 we waited yeah. till. 
And I kept telling August. you that, didn't I? Because yep. you said, let's book it in July. Let's just go now. And I was like, no, I'm not ready. And to be honest, Bri, mm -hmm. I don't know if I still am ready. No. In fact, I know we're going and I know I'm going to get the dental work. And the story behind that is I was quoted four and a half thousand dollars to have my tooth sorted and filled and crowned in here in New Zealand. That is, um, it's going to cost four and a half thousand in Thailand. The same work done is 2000. No, it's about 1500. 1500. So the way we looked at it was like, okay, well, we're up 3000. It costs 3000 to go to Thailand for a month. Mm hmm win-win situation we can go over there we're going to get massage we've looked into day retreats uh, meditation retreats um spending time with buddhist monks and learning all about that and meditation and just beautiful soul filling loveliness that we can go to thailand yeah. and indulge in just me and you but here is the 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 secret uh, that there isn't a secret because i've told you loads of times yeah. but I'm nervous. I'm 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 really really nervous about it because I'm scared that we're going to go over there and I'm going to wreck it for you because all I'm going to be doing is going oh I'm still really you know I'm not I'm not ready I'm crying all the time I'm you know I hand on heart that's what I'm 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 nervous yeah. about. Yeah. Um so it will be interesting to see if that is the case, just how it is, you know, what it's like to be away from New Zealand, what it's like to be away from the kids, what it's like to be in a place that doesn't speak English and, you know, just yeah. is just completely different to what we're what we're used to at home. Well, it is. We've, we've been there before. Um, and, you know, you're six weeks plus into, you know, your mum passing and it's got another six weeks or so before we go. So we never know from week to week and day to day at the moment of how you're going to be feeling the next day. But um, I think, like you said last night, probably when you're actually on the plane, you might just go, oh, "Yeah, thank goodness we're doing this. Uh, but the build up to going will be, that will be the more anxious time of how am I going to be and what's going to happen. So I hope not. I no, hope but not. That's I what really we'll keep, want we'll, to... You know, we'll, 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 that's the idea of this podcast is we'll keep you... Keep you and informed, how, I'm yeah. On what, what and how we're, we're feeling and stuff. We're going to wrap up now, but next week I really want to talk to you and remind me about this. Just email me and yeah. remind me because I will forget. Email me and <laughs> Liz, it's a drama, and tell me, Liz, tell me about the life and death situation. It <laughs> <laughs> sounds bad, doesn't it? <laughs> it, does. <laughs> it does, given the given the topic. Yeah. But there is something that me and you are. Well, disagreeing there's, there's, there's about there's something that happened in thailand which we'll talk about in next week's show about what happened which is affecting this my fear of yes. this life and death fear that i've got uh, yes because quite honestly yeah i yeah i want to come back from thailand in one piece and so we will talk about that next week yeah. we promise to talk to you about that but for now I just want to share before I go, someone else left a comment on, again, this is on YouTube. Um, they left a comment, wherever, wherever I put it, saying what she does that helps her through her grief journey. And I just wanted to share this with you because I don't like keeping these things to myself because if you, if I know about it, then you, yeah, should, know you should know about, about it. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a, from a lady called Claudia and she said, Liz, when I lost my mama several years ago, there were so many times I wanted to call her and tell her something only to remember she was gone. I had all that stuff inside me that I had to tell her. So what I did was bought a journal and I called it Letters to Mom. I just make entries like I was talking directly to her and I wrote in it almost every day at first. It has dwindled over the years, but I still write in it from time to time. It's not easy as my mama has been gone for 18 years, yeah. but it really helped. And I just thought that is it's lovely, isn't it? beautiful. Yeah. So Claudia, thank you so much for sharing that tip with mm. me. Um, I talked last week about writing and mum coming through with my writing. And I just love that. I love mm. the idea of letters to mum. And yeah, it's just beautiful. So thank you so much for sharing it with me. Yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And on that note... Thank you, Bri. I didn't mean what I said about you in the comedy store. Yeah, you did. know, I didn't. I, I, I am going to go to another comedy store yeah. with you. That would be my thing. Years. That'll well, be my thing. You know. Let's let's see if we can book a comedy store tomorrow night. Then no, eh? no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I think one in Thailand wouldn't really work, would it? No, no, no. Listen, thank you so much for listening, for being with us. 
Don't ever forget our hearts beat with yours. You are so special. I love you so, so much, each and every one of you. Until next time, I will speak to you soon. Yeah. So, kia kaha, stay strong, kia u, stay true. And that's true to yourself. And yeah, see you on the next one. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hello. Is there anything between me and you that you can think of that you think, oh God, I wish I hadn't said that to her? Let's do, let's have a little game. Mm-hmm. You try and remember. No, come on. Yeah. You try and, it's good to have games when you're married. It keeps the yeah. relationship fresh. Right. You try and play this little get undressed. Okay. <laughs> I am. Put your pants on. <laughs> Put your pants on for this one. No, try and remember something yeah. that's happened in our relationship. And I'll yeah. tell you if I remember it the way you remember it. I'm sorry to put you on the spot like this because this really is putting you on the spot. But. I think 